Some were wondering, was this part of a plan? Had Terry Johan planned on disappearing altogether? Fast forward to where we are today, and Terry Johan is yet to reappear here in central Ohio or anywhere. And those friends who two weeks ago said they still had some hope say that has now given way to fearing for the worst. I think that theft is just the cost of doing business, but for the small independently owned grocer, it really is a big deal. Take, for instance, a meat thief that first goes after lamb chops, valued at about $10 each. Then they might move on to something a little bit more expensive, like this. This is brisket, valued at about $20. And then they still haven't had enough. They go after steaks, each one of these at $15 each. You add all that up, and what you have is about $70 worth of product gone in about 30 seconds. Three brand new elementary schools for the city of Lancaster, which means a lot of transition. First and foremost, for the elementary school students who get up each and every day. There's the obvious transition for families as well. New traffic patterns in and around their homes. And if they're walking their children to school or maybe going to a brand new bus stop, it's likely one they've never actually seen before. And then there's a the transition of the bus driver. Last spring, Lancaster City Schools actually put them on the road. But first, we begin with NBC4's Marcus Thorpe, who is on the ground, where dozens of firefighters, 75 in all, battling the intense flames. Marcus, what's the latest? About two hours of fighting and they are still battling at this point defensively at that because it is simply just a huge fire that they can't get too close to. They're just trying to contain it at this point. I'll step out and give you a closer look. You can see that the flames are still coming out of the top and dark smoke that is still coming here from the 2600 block of Fisher Road. They have tapped into multiple lines here trying to get as much water as they can on a defensive battle right now. No evacuations at this point. It is our understanding from one of the battalion chiefs here at the scene that there's possibly some vegetation that's on the inside of this building and obviously with that it's going to burn for quite a while. They are putting about 1500 gallons per minute per nozzle and they have about six nozzles up there right now. So going through an awful lot of water. A car smashed into a home on Penfield Drive right into the homeowner's bedroom. NBC4's Marcus Thorpe has been following this story all morning. Marcus, did they ever find that driver? Uh, 18 years old. That's what we know at this point. We know that police are still looking for him. Let me walk you through exactly what happened with this early this morning. Now this driver, police say coming at a higher rate of speed, actually came right over what we see here. This is the curb and you can actually follow the tracks all the way up to the house and you can see it is still badly damaged that house. Now you think it would stop there, correct? But it didn't. In fact, the 18 year old, he bolts a 14 year old girl who was actually in the car with him, then gets into the driver's seat and she pulls out and tries to go this way. Now, eventually she was caught because the owner of this house actually got out of his home. Breaking news, police searching for the driver who hit a pedestrian and left the scene. NBC4's Marcus Thorpe joins us live from that scene in East Columbus at Livingston and Alum Creek. Good morning. Yeah, this is just between Nelson and Alum Creek here on East Livingston, and you can see that the accident investigation team is here from Columbus Police interviewing some of the witnesses here from this area. They've got crime scene tape that is completely lined this area, and then look right there in the middle of the road. You can see some of the debris. You can actually see some of the clothing as well from where this person was hit. In fact, if you look, there is a shoe on the left, and then about uh, 20 or 30 paces all the way to the right is a second shoe. So this person was hit very hard. Some of the witnesses here at the scene actually had a chance to talk to us and said that they saw the person get hit, then the driver pull into a Shell gas station, which is right at the corner of Alum Creek and Livingston. He actually got out and took a peek at the person who was laying in the middle of the street, then back in his car and takes off. That's when police start the pursuit of trying to find out exactly who was responsible. I want to take you to a secondary scene. This is live pictures right now from Old Livingston, where they have a vehicle there. Now, our crew there at the scene says there appears to be somebody in the back of a cruiser that is in handcuffs at this point. They believe this might be be the car that is involved in this pedestrian hit incident. No word yet on the condition of the person that was hit, but the witness here at the scene says it didn't appear that that person was actually moving for a couple of minutes until those medics had a chance to get here and still unclear exactly how that person is doing at the hospital at Grant this morning. No matter what angle you look for or filter you look through, it seems body cameras are coming to the city of Columbus. That is, if city leadership has anything to say about it. Now it will be up to this nine-person committee to get focused on how to do it the way they want here in Columbus. You've been dispatched on an officer in trouble call. He's got my gun. He's got my gun. He's got my gun! <laughs> After some classroom time, these members of the body camera committee got some scenario time too, with body cameras front and center. 
This is uh, particularly important uh, because of uh, it's a very timely issue that we've been dealing with in the nation. I think it's important for Columbus to get it right. Each group went through the scenario, including Carla Ruthen, executive director of Stonewall Columbus. You know, our police officers have a very tough job. These are life and death situations every single minute of every single day. It was officer down. In some cases, the cameras came off. Other times, you could see exactly what the officers would see. Then the chance for the committee to come back to the classrooms, discuss what they were seeing, and some concerns or questions they might have had. I believe it's one thing to read about and to watch uh, uh, the news about body cameras. It's another thing to actually uh, experience scenarios in which they could be utilized. And that's exactly what they want in phase one here. But make no mistake, it certainly appears body cameras, they're happening. How can we best implement body cameras here in the city of Columbus? That's our mission. But as far as this committee is concerned, this is happening in yes. Columbus. Yes. Okay. Over the next several months, that committee will be listening to speakers and doing more research to figure out exactly how they want to move forward on the body camera issue here in the city of Columbus. Marcus Thorpe, NBC4. Aliyah Hanna lived a nightmare, and her four year old daughter Bailey saw it happen. He was waiting in my daughter's room and attacked me. Investigators say the attacker was Jason Yarhouse, an ex-boyfriend. He tied my hands with zip ties, hit me twice in the back of my head, covered in blood, cut like my head was pounding. I didn't know really what all he had done. She screamed at her young daughter to get out and get help. And when I yelled at my daughter to leave, I thought that was the last time I was going to see her. She says the violence continued as Yarhouse looked for his keys. Then the neighbor came back. Said if you call the cops, I'll kill her. The neighbor left and called 911. The suspect got out of there too, and Hannah was able to call 911 as well. I'm next to the neighbors are just attacked. She went to the hospital with serious injuries. Yarhouse was later arrested. Now, more than 24 hours later from that terror, Aaliyah is taking in the little moments. I love you. With her little hero, even though she knows it won't be easy for this four-year-old. I'm fine. I can get through it. My injuries will heal. I can, I can handle this mentally. But to think that she's going to have to think about this every day as long as I look the way I do right now, she's going to remember. Since 1965, Margaret Ann Samuels has called this her church home. Tonight, she has just one question. Who would do something like this? This is breaking into her church, setting up ladders and stealing beautiful stained glass windows. Oh, my word. <laughs> it, 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 it's, you know, it's devastating in many ways. Um, part of it is just the notion of loss. Deb Bergman is the pastor of this, the oldest worshiping congregation in the area. This is a congregation that's small and struggling. And, and this is a place that feels holy to us. To have someone violate that is just hard to deal with. Not just the stained glass windows that these thieves were after. In fact, they wanted to get inside some of the office spaces. So they pushed through this window and actually broke the lock. You can see right there just how much damage they were able to do. Once inside, they looked through everything they could. It's still unclear exactly how much they got away with. But they took plenty from this group. For now, a little faith in their fellow man. Something that could be turned around. Someone might be moved in their heart to return things to us and maybe maybe find some repentance and some grace themselves. But they will never, not even for a thief, close themselves off from the work to be done. The one thing we are, we are all united on is that this will not cause us to close ourselves off from the world. This is proof the world needs us.